How is it that some series are legendary and others are just mediocre? For example, all series that are iconic and popular with viewers require good acting. And this, in turn, is one of the main components of success. But the main thing is also that the series must have its own unique style to become popular, and the people who create it must be very talented, so that each story is truly special. Time will tell what kind of footprint this series will leave behind. But its discussion rate at this point in time is quite high. Meanwhile, the episode release date has already been determined. Spectators will be able to see a new episode on January 20th. The authors of the series know how to keep the intrigue and keep the audience in suspense until the premiere. This day will obviously be long awaited for all viewers, who held their breath on the day of the announcement. Hopefully, the season will not fail or disappoint all those who have high hopes for it. So in advance I wish you a pleasant viewing. Series with many episodes do not lose their relevance, and today they are the most popular. Next in our review we will tell you about series that have absorbed the best qualities and have become global hits. Silicon Valley is an American comedy television series. The series, a parody of Silicon Valley culture, focuses on Richard Hendricks, a programmer who founds a startup company called Pi Piper, and chronicles his struggles trying to maintain his company while facing competition from larger entities. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its airing, with praise for its writing and humor. The show has been nominated for numerous accolades, including five consecutive Primetime Emmy Award nominations for Outstanding Comedy Series. The first episode introduces the viewer to an interesting plot. Richard Hendricks is a low-level programmer with futuristic internet giant Huoli. He is often taunted by his more successful work colleagues, and his ideas are dismissed by egotistical entrepreneur Ehrlich Bachmann, who owns the tech development incubator where Richard lives with fellow programmers Nelson Baghetti, Bertram Gilfoyle and Dinesh Chugtai. However when Huoli stumbles upon the music copyright service that Richard is working on, entitled Pied Piper, they discover that hidden within the useless application is the best file compression algorithm in the world, and news spreads quickly. Eventually Richard is caught between a $10 million buyout by Huoli CEO Gavin Belson, and a $200,000 investment from eccentric billionaire Peter Gregory, he must decide whether to give up his program to the highest bidder, or to take the investment and create a business out of it himself. After having a panic attack and vomiting, Richard runs into Peter's assistant Monica, who tells him that she believes in him and his idea. Richard decides to take the investment, and run the business himself. Co-creator and executive producer Mike Judge had worked in a Silicon Valley startup early in his career. In 1987, he was a programmer at Parallax, a company with about 40 employees. Judge disliked the company's culture and his colleagues and quit after less than three months, but the experience gave him the background to later create a show about the region's people and companies. Silicon Valley has received critical acclaim since its premiere. In January 2017, in an audience interaction by Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, Gates recounted the episode in Silicon Valley in which the protagonists tried to pitch their product to various venture capitalists, saying it reminded him of his own experiences. Magnificent Century is a Turkish historical fiction television series. It is based on the life of Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent, the longest reigning sultan of the Ottoman Empire, and his wife Hurm Sultan, a slave girl who became the first Ottoman Hasiki Sultan. It also shines the light on the era known as the Sultanate of Women. The show generated controversy and complaints from some viewers, for what they referred to as a disrespectful, indecent and hedonistic portrayal of the historical sultan. Turkey's Radio and Television Supreme Council, claimed they had received over 70,000 complaints about the show and warned Show TV to publicly apologize for wrongly exposing the privacy of a historical person. The Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemned the show as an effort to show our history in a negative light to the younger generations. An MP for the Governing Justice and Development Party, Oktay Saral, went further, threatening to outlaw the misrepresentation of historical figures. The series is popular in many countries around the world. In Greece, the series has become quite popular for people of all socio-economic backgrounds and ages. Many Greek viewers enjoyed the visuals and oriental decorations present in the show, as well as the cultural proximity and historical ties between the two countries. It has become so popular that Bishop Anthemos of Thessaloniki and the Golden Dawn Party condemned the show and urged Greeks not to watch it. 
In the Republic of North Macedonia, Turkish series have become so popular, that the Macedonian parliament has moved to ban Turkish soaps to reduce the Turkish impact on Macedonian society. Turkish series will gradually be removed and replaced by national programs, according to a 2012 bill. Sherlock is a British mystery crime drama television series based on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes detective stories. Created by Stephen Moffat and Mark Gatiss, it stars Benedict Cumberbatch as Sherlock Holmes and Martin Freeman as Dr. John Watson. Thirteen episodes have been produced, with four three-part series airing from 2010 to 2017 and a special episode that aired on January 1, 2016. Sherlock has been praised for the quality of its writing, acting, and directing. It has been nominated for numerous awards including Emmys, BAFTAs, and a Golden Globe, winning several awards across a variety of categories. The first episode, A Study in Pink, loosely based upon the first Sherlock Holmes novel A Study in Scarlet, was written by Moffat and directed by Paul McGuigan. The show has received critical acclaim, sustaining positive reviews across its first three series. However, its fourth series received mixed reviews. The show's popularity resulted in inquiries for coats similar to Sherlock's, reported retailer Debenhams. Garment manufacturer Bellstaff put the wool trench coat worn by Benedict Cumberbatch back into production before the series had ended. According to overnight data provided by the Broadcaster's Audience Research Board, the highest overnight figure from the first series of Sherlock was 7.5 million for the opening episode, A Study in Pink, whereas the second series averaged over 8 million viewers. Arcane is an adult animated action-adventure streaming television series created by Christian Link and Alex Yee for Netflix. Arcane's first season was released to critical acclaim, with praise directed at its animation, story, world-building, action sequences, characters, emotional weight, and voice acting. Some have noted the series' appeal to both casual viewers who have never played League of Legends and to longtime fans of the game. It also set the record as Netflix's highest-rated series so far within a week of its premiere, ranked first on the Netflix Top 10 chart in 52 countries, and ranked second on the chart in the United States. The site's critical consensus reads, Arcane makes an arresting first impression, combining a spectacular mix of 2D and 3D animation with an emotionally compelling story to deliver a video game adaptation that could become legendary. The first episode, which introduces the viewer to what is going on, has a very interesting and gripping plot. Rebels from the repressed undercity of Zaun march across a bridge into Piltover, resulting in the brutal pushback by Piltover enforcers. During the ensuing violence, Sisters Powder and Vi find their parents dead in the rubble and are taken in by Vander, the leader of the failed rebellion, as his own children. Years later, Vi and Powder rob a Piltovan penthouse with their adopted brothers, Milo and Clagger, after receiving a tip from their friend Echo. Powder steals a set of magical crystals, accidentally shattering one when the owner of the penthouse returns. The resulting explosion destroys a large portion of the building and alerts enforcers to their presence, whom they narrowly escape. Returning to the Undercity, the siblings encounter Deckard and his thugs, while they beat them in a fistfight, Powder is chased and loses the loot. Vander, now a barman and a de facto community leader in Zaun, scolds the children for their carelessness, and attempts to smooth things over with Grayson, the sheriff of the enforcers. Vi berates Milo for calling Powder a jinx and reassures her sister that things will get better. In the lowest parts of the Undercity, crime lord Silco extracts information from Deckard and tests a new mutagen known as Shimmer on a Rat. Establishment, Osman is a Turkish historical drama television series. It is a sequel to the popular multi-episode show Risen Ertegrel, which gained fans around the world and was one of the highest rated shows in Turkey. The actors of the series underwent special training for nine months. They learned how to ride a horse, wield a sword, practice swordplay, shoot an arrow, and learn martial choreography. Their military training took place in mountainous and forested areas, where they built their fortifications, sought water, and prepared food. Audiences love the beautiful sets, which look authentic, and the detailed costumes, which give a fairly accurate representation of the historical era. The story of the founder of the state, who became part of national legends, cannot turn out neutral. It will be fiery and memorable. For Turkish viewers there is nothing unnatural about this, 
but for those who watch the series in other countries it may seem a bit strange. The series is focuses on the life of Osman, the founder of the Ottoman Empire. The TV show includes Osman Ghazi's internal and external struggles and how he establishes and controls the Ottoman Empire. It portrays his struggles against Byzantium and the Mongol Ilkhanate and how he was able to secure independence from the Sultanate of Rum to establish a sovereign state that would stand up to the Byzantine and Mongol empires and would honor the Turks. The character of Osman faces many enemies and traitors in his quest and the show illustrates how he was able to overcome these obstacles and fulfill his mission with the help of his loyal companions, family, and friends. In Constant Love is a Turkish romantic television series. The plot proved interesting to many viewers. Rayyan is Nesu Sadoglu's granddaughter, patriarch of the prominent Sadoglu family in the town of Midya. However, she has never felt loved by anyone in her household except her father, Hazar, her mother, Zara, and her younger sister, Gul. Rayyan has been mistreated by her grandfather since childhood because she is not his biological granddaughter, and the only reason he accepted her into the family was at Hazar's request. One morning, Rayyan goes out on horseback to watch the sunrise. On her way back, her horse is nearly hit by a car. Rayyan falls and loses consciousness. The driver of the car, a handsome young man named Miran, is immediately attracted to her and offers to drive her back home. Yaren, daughter of Hazar's brother, Chihan, is infatuated with Miran. When Miran falls in love with her cousin, Yaren swears revenge on Rayen for stealing Miran from her and ruining her life. Eventually, Miran and Rayen are married. However, Miran abandons Rayen after their first night as husband and wife, sparking intense feelings of betrayal and hatred in Rayen. She vows to never let him forget what he has done to her. Soon, Rayen finds out that everything Miran has told her about himself is a lie, his name, his background, his family, and the wedding. Miran's plan all along was to gain the trust of the Sadagla family, marry their innocent daughter and then leave her the morning after, humiliating the entire family and thus, exacting the first part of his revenge against the Sadaglas. The Good Doctor is an American medical drama television series based on the 2013 South Korean series of the same name. Actor Daniel Day Kim, world famous for his role in the TV series Lost, noticed the original series and bought the rights for his production company. He began adapting the series and, in 2015, eventually shopped it to CBS Television Studios. CBS decided against creating a pilot. Because Kim felt so strongly about the series, he bought back the rights from CBS. Eventually, Sony Pictures Television and Kim worked out a deal and brought on David Shore, creator of the Fox Medical Drama House, to develop the series. In the first episode, on the way to begin his surgical residency at San Jose Hospital, Dr. Sean Murphy witnesses an airport sign fall and shatter glass onto a young boy. With his unique ability to visualize the internal body and using improvised methods and tools, Sean is able to stabilize the boy. In a hospital board meeting, Dr. Aaron Glassman, president of the hospital, tries to convince the board to hire Sean, despite his autism. Throughout the episode, flashbacks were shown, revealing the picture of Sean's childhood and his motivation for becoming a doctor. How I Met Your Mother is an American sitcom, created by Craig Thomas and Carter Bays for CBS. The series, which aired from 2005 to 2014, follows the main character, Ted Mosby, and his group of friends in New York City's Manhattan. The series was loosely inspired by Thomas and Bay's friendship when they both lived in New York. The vast majority of episodes were directed by Pamela Fryman, who directed 196 episodes out of 208. Known for its unique structure, humor, and incorporation of dramatic elements, How I Met Your Mother was popular throughout its run. It initially received positive reviews upon release, but reception became more mixed as the seasons went on. The show was nominated for 91 awards and received 21. In 2010, Alison Hannigan won the People's Choice Award for Favorite TV Comedy Actress. In 2012, seven years after its premiere, the series won the People's Choice Award for Favorite Network TV Comedy, and Neil Patrick Harris won the award for Favorite TV Comedy Actor twice. The series follows the adventures of Ted Mosby, played by Josh Radner, and his love life as a single man. 
His stories are narrated by Bob Saget as Ted Mosby 25 years later as he tells them to his adolescent children. The plot of the first episodes of the first season was very interesting. After his best friend Marshall proposes to his long-term girlfriend, Lily, Ted solicits help from his friend Barney to find the one for his life. He manages to get a date with Robin, a girl he met at his usual neighborhood bar, but threatens to scare Robin away when he accidentally reveals his love for her on the very first date. Meanwhile, Marshall accidentally hits Lily in the eye with the champagne stopper after they get engaged, forcing her to wear an eye patch. In an attempt to repair his situation with Robin, Ted instead pursues a casual relationship with her by inviting her to a series of parties. Marshall tries to write an important 25-page law paper, but Ted's parties and Lily's post-engagement desire distracts him. Meanwhile, Barney tries to end a relationship he unknowingly started. Ted agrees to let Barney disrupt his routine by taking an impromptu trip to the airport with him that eventually leads the duo to Philadelphia and trouble with airport security. Meanwhile, Lily and Robin go out for drinks, but Lily becomes jealous when she is not as successful with men as Robin is, for which she blames her engagement ring. Marshall travels between both situations in an attempt to rectify the group's problems. Miracle Workers is an American anthology comedy television series created by Simon Rich. It is based on Rich's writings, with each season being based on a different work. Miracle Workers premiered on February 12, 2019, with its seven-episode first season. The first season follows Craig, a low-level angel responsible for handling all of humanity's prayers, and Eliza, a recent transfer from the Department of Dirt. Their boss, God, has pretty much checked out to focus on his favorite hobbies. To prevent Earth's destruction, Craig and Eliza must achieve their most impossible miracle to date. Alongside the initial series order announcement, it was confirmed that Daniel Radcliffe and Owen Wilson would star in the series. Simon Rich back when he wrote the book had high hopes that someday it would be filmed, but no one seriously believed that anyone would be able to recreate such a huge world on the screen. Daniel Radcliffe was a fan of the books even before the adaptation and was one of the first to join the cast of the series. At the same time, Simon greatly admired Daniel as an actor. Radcliffe is also an excellent producer, he helped the project in every way and took a lot of different creative decisions, from finding designers to the choice of the cast. In the early stages of script development, Owen Wilson was in the cast. But after the actor saw the final drafts of the script, his opinion disagreed with the screenwriters about his character. So he was replaced by Steve Buscemi. The idea of the creators was that God was flawed and vulnerable, just like the people he created. They wanted to see a character who is sometimes reckless and irrational. That's the kind of God Steve would play. Misfits is a British science fiction comedy drama television show, about a group of young offenders sentenced to work in a community service program, where they obtain supernatural powers after a strange electrical storm. The show premiered on November 12, 2009 and concluded on December 11, 2013 in its fifth season. The show is filmed in South East London, mostly on location around the Southmere Lake in Thamesmead, including the signature shot of the four multi-story buildings from the roof of the Lakeside Centre and Bexley College. The first series was accompanied by an online viral marketing, on social networking websites such as Facebook and Twitter. For example, in a British first, the characters Simon and Kelly tweeted during the initial transmission of each episode, with the content of the tweets provided by writers Sam Leifer and Ben Edwards, under the direction of lead writer Howard Overman and executive producer Petra Fry. British reviews were positive. The Times gave it 4 out of 5 stars, calling it a new union, salty British street humor with whiz-bang special effects. The Irish media were also impressed with the show. The Evening Herald called the debut episode dark, hilarious, exciting and beautifully produced. Squid Game is a South Korean survival drama television series created for Netflix. The series revolves around a contest where 456 players, all of whom are in deep financial debt, risk their lives to play a series of dangerous children's games for the chance to win a 45 billion won prize. The title of the series draws from a similarly named Korean children's game. Huang had conceived of the idea based on his own economic struggles early in life, as well as the class disparity in South Korea and capitalism. 
Though he had initially written it in 2009, he was unable to find a production company to fund the idea until Netflix took an interest around 2019 as part of their drive to expand their foreign programming offerings. Squid Game was released worldwide on September 17, 2021, to critical acclaim and international attention. Around 2008, series creator had tried unsuccessfully to get investment for a different movie script that he had written, and he, his mother, and his grandmother had to take out loans to stay afloat, but still struggled amid the debt crisis within the country. Huang compared the character's situation in these works to his own current situation and considered the idea of being able to join such a survival game to win money to get him out of debt, leading him to write a film script on that concept throughout 2009. Immediately the first episode impressed millions of viewers. Song Ji Hun, a divorced father and indebted gambler who lives with his elderly mother, is invited to play a series of children's games for a chance at a large cash prize. Accepting the offer, he is taken to an unknown location where he finds himself among 455 other players who are all deeply in debt. The players are made to wear green tracksuits and are kept under watch at all times by masked guards in pink jumpsuits, with the games overseen by the front man, who wears a black mask and black uniform. Squid Game was considered one of the latest examples of the growing trend of popular South Korean media to gain international attention since the late 2010s, similar to popular Korean pop bands like BTS and Korean dramas and films like Parasite. Scrubs is an American medical comedy drama television series created by Bill Lawrence that aired from 2001 to 2010 on NBC and later ABC. The series follows the lives of employees at the fictional Sacred Heart Hospital, which is a teaching hospital. The title is a play on surgical scrubs and a term for a low-ranking person because at the beginning of the series, most of the main characters are medical interns. The series was noted for its fast-paced slapstick and surreal vignettes presented mostly as the daydreams of the central character, John Dorian, played by Zach Braff. The main cast for all but its last season consisted of Braff, Sarah Chulke, Donald Faison, Neil Flynn, Ken Jenkins, John C. McGinley, and Judy Reyes. Scrubs focuses on the unique point of view of its main character and narrator, Dr. John Michael Dorian for the first eight seasons, with season nine being narrated by the new main character Lucy Bennett. Most episodes feature multiple storylines thematically linked by voiceovers done by Braff, as well as the comical daydreams of JD. Almost every episode title for the first eight seasons begins with the word my. Bill Lawrence says this is because each episode is Dr. John Dorian writing in his diary. For the first eight seasons, the series featured seven main cast members, with numerous other characters recurring throughout the course of the series. Starting with the ninth season, many of the original cast left as regular characters, while four new additions were made to the main cast. The first season introduces John Michael Dorian and his best friend Christopher Turk in their first year out of medical school as interns at Sacred Heart Hospital. JD meets his reluctant mentor Perry Cox, an attractive female intern named Elliot, on whom he develops a crush. The hospital's janitor, who goes out of his way to make JD's life difficult. Chief of Medicine Dr. Bob Kelso, who is more concerned about the budget than the patients. And Carla Espinoza, the head nurse who eventually becomes Turk's girlfriend. The characters face romance and relationship issues, family obligations, overwhelming paperwork, long shifts, dealing with death of patients, and conflicting pressures from senior doctors. <laughs>